<laughs> Reading the book slightly breaks the game. Everything's breaking this game. Marksmanship lesson. Oh. I've never read this. Galmarilla Bryn had very definite opinions on how things should be done. Every slave he bought, or every slave he bought in the day he bought him or her was soundly whipped in the courtyard for a period of one to three hours, depending on the individual degree of independent spirit. The whip he used, oh my god, the whip he used, or had his castellan used, was of wet, knotted cloth which regularly drew blood, but very seldom maimed. To his great satisfaction and personal pride, few slaves ever needed to be whipped more than once. The memory of their first day, and the sight and sound of every subsequent slave's first day stayed with them throughout their lives. When Bryn brought his first Bosmer slave, he ordered his Custalan to whip him only for an hour. The creature, which Bryn had named Dob, Dobby, seemed so much more delicate than the Argonians and Kajiti and Oaks who made up the bulk of his slaves. Dob was clearly ill-suited for work in the mines or in the fields, but he seemed presentable enough for domestic service. Dob did his work quietly and tolerably well. Bryn occasionally had to correct him by refusing him food, but the punishment never needed to go further. Whenever guests arrived at the plantation, the sight of the exotic and elegant addition to Bryn's household staff always impressed them. "'Here you,' said Ganalath Elak, a minor but still noble member of the house in Doril, as Dal presented her with a glass of wine. "'Were you born asleep?' "'No, Sidara,' Dal answered with a bow. "'I used to rob nice ladies like you on the road.' The company all laughed with delight, but Kalmiril Brin checked with the slave trader from whom he had bought Dab, and found that the story was true. The Bosmore had been a highwayman, though not one of any great notoriety, before he had been caught and sold into slavery as punishment. It seemed so extraordinary that a quiet fellow like Dab, who always looked respectfully downward at the sight of his superiors, could have been a criminal. Brin made up his mind to question him about it. You must have used some sort of weapon when all when you were robbing all those pilgrims and merchants, Brim grinned as he watched Dob mop. Yes, Sidra, Dob replied humbly, a bow. Of course, you Basmera are supposed to be very handy with those, Brim thought a moment and then asked. A bit of a marksman, were you? Dob nodded humbly. You will tutor my son, Waterlick in archery, the master said after another moment's pause. Waterlick was twelve years age and had been rather sadly spoiled by his mother, Bryn's late wife. The boy was useless at swordplay, fearful of being cut. He embarrassed his father's pride, but the personality defect seemed ideally suited to the bow. Bryn had his castellan purchase a fine wrought bow, several quivers of arrows, and ordered targets to be set up in the wild flower field next to the plantation house. In a few days' time, the lessons began. For the first few days, the master watched Wajalik and Dob to be certain that the slave knew how to teach. He was pleased to see the boy learn the grips and the different stances. Business concerns, however, had to take precedence. Bryn only had time to see to it that the lessons were continuing, but not how well they were progressing. It was a month's time before the issue was re-examined. Bryn and his Castellan were reviewing the plantation's earnings and expenses, and they had come to the area of miscellaneous household costs. You might also check to see how many targets in the field need to be repaired. I've already anticipated that, Sidara, said the Castellan. They are in pristine condition. How is that possible? Bryn shook his head. I've seen targets fall apart after only a few good shots. There shouldn't be anything left after a month's worth of lessons. There are no holes of any kinds in the targets, Sidara. See for yourself. As it happened at that hour, the marksmanship lesson was underway. Bryn walked across the field, watching Dob guide Wajlik's arm as the boy took aim at the sky. The arrow flew up into an arc over the top of the target, burying itself in the ground. Bryn examined the target and found it to be, as his Stellan said, in pristine condition. No arrow had touched it. Master Wajlik, you must pull your right arm down further, Dob was saying, and the follow-through is essential if you expect your arrow to gain any height. Height? Bryn snarled. What about accuracy? Unless he's been secretly racking up a high kill ratio on birds, because this is apparently League, you haven't taught my son a thing about marksmanship. Dob bowed humbly. Sidora, First Master Wajalik must become comfortable with a weapon before he need worry about accuracy. In Valenwood, in Valenwood, we learn by watching the bolt arc at different levels and different winds before we try very hard to strike targets. 
Bryn's face turned purple with fury. I am no fool. I should not have known to trust a slave of my boy's education. The master grabbed Dob and shoved him toward the plantation house. Dob, head down, began the humble, shuffling walk he had learned in his domestic duties. Wajalik, tears streaming down his face, tried to follow. You stay in practice, wrote his father. Try aiming at the target itself, not at the sky. You are not coming back to the house until there is one hole in that damned bullseye. The boy tearfully returned to practice, while Bryn brought Dob into the courtyard and called for his whip. Dob suddenly broke away and scrabbled to hide between some barrels in the center of the yard. Take your punishment, slave. I should have never shown you mercy the day I bought you. Bryn bellowed, bringing the whip down and Dob's exposed back again and again. I have to toughen you up. There will be no more soft jobs as tutor and valet in your future. Wajalik's plaintive yell drifted in from the meadow. I can't, father, I can't hit it. Master Wajalik, Dob cried back as loud as he could, his voice shaking with pain. Keep your left arm straight and aim slightly east. The wind has changed. Stop confusing my son, Bryn screamed. You'll be in the sultry fields if I don't beat you to death first, like you deserve. Dob, the boy wailed far away. I still can't hit it. Master Wajalik, take four steps back, aim east, and don't be afraid of the height. Dob tore away from the barrels, hiding under a cart near the wall. Bryn pursued him, raining down blows. The boy's arrow sailed high over the target and kept climbing, reaching a pinnacle at the edge of the plantation house before coming down in a magnificent arc. Bryn tasted the blood before he realized he'd been hit. Gingerly, he raised his eyes and felt the arrowhead protruding at the back of his neck. He looked at Dob, crouching under the wagon, and thought he saw a thin smile cross the slave's lips. Just for an instant before he died, Bryn saw the face of the rogue highwayman and Dob. Bullseye, Master Wajalik, Dob crowed.